Are you ready? The Cobra has arrived! This amazing printer has a build volume of 220 by 220 by 250. It has an ABL sensor. It has a direct drive extruder. Touch screen. You can adjust the Y and X axis. It has a flex plate. It has a 25 point leveling system with the ABL. It has a 32 bit motherboard. So here we go. And let's see, let's go to prepare, leveling, auto leveling, I want to test that probe, and I never did. Okay, tested the probe to make sure it worked with the wrench. Now let me redo this. Go back to prepare. I almost forgot because if the if it should fail and the probe doesn't work, it'll crash into the bed and cause problems. So always check it first to make sure when you first get it. Go to leveling, auto leveling. Hit OK. And then a build plate I put in the sink with soap and water and cleaned it real good. In case there's any oil or anything on the bed, I cleaned it off. Now it says preheating, please wait. Okay, the bed's at 58, almost to 60. And that's going to go around and probe the whole bed. And then I'll have to do the paper test in the center. Now let's set the Z offset.
Okay, negative 2.00 to start your grab. Go ahead and hit OK. Now hit the filament button. Okay, we have to raise it until it's see. Move access. Z up. The 10 button. Need room to load filament. Prepare filament. Filament in. Like the temp's going up to 230, which is going to be too high. So we'll need to take that 205, 210. Why it's preset at 230 is beyond me. Okay, we're using the sample filament. My camera cut off. I'm not sure if I got it. But we might as well use a sample since we got it. And uh, we're printing the outlets on the test card. When I preload the filament, it preheated to 230, which is way too hot for PLA. And got it loaded, and as soon as I started the print, which had the owl on there for test print, and then it backed off to 200 degrees, and the bed is at 60. And the uh, Cooling fan on the control board is fairly loud, but it's not bad. I mean, it's a machine. Machines make noise. A lot of people complain about, oh, the printer's too loud. Well, that's just the way it is. If you don't like the, how loud the machine is, find a different hobby. But yeah, it's not bad at all. let's check out some amazing prints here now remember they gave you the small little white sample which I personally don't like those are so little here's what I was able to uh, achieve with that well and here's how much was left over on the SD card they give you an owl file so I printed out the little owl it's on a brim came out amazingly well 
then I figured, well, I got to do a Benchy. So I got on Thingiverse, found a Benchy file, and the Benchy came out very nice. Nice quality, printed nice, and here's how much film was left over after printing those two items. And then I moved on with Clock Spring, and I've done this nice little box here. Got a lid that slides on it with skulls. It came out very nice. And then I jumped over here. I changed filament. And this was done with uh, my Ziltec Army Green filament. This was done with the white that came with the printer. And I jumped over and I done a Lola Bunny. And look what happened. Oh no. <laughs> For some reason the head kept hitting the top of this guitar until it completely moved the head and misaligned it. And then I had a layer shift and so I had to stop the print. So the profile that I tweaked and kind of you know, was working with, didn't quite work out with me, work out for me. And then my friend uh, Tim over DeWitt up in Canada and a few other people have done these really cool bird, bird whistles. So I think I got on Colt, so I'm not really sure where I got this file from. But, you know, based on the picture, you can see it. They're water whistles. And these are really cool to make, especially for your grandkids. So they can drive their parents crazy. But check these out. I put water in it and listen to this. I'm just kind of pulsating with my lips as I blow in and out on it. Kind of blow in, suck out, and makes a bird whistle sound. Makes a bird sound. So anyway, that's really cool. So I figured I'd do four of those. I can give those out to somebody. Very cool. And then I switched back over my filament to the Army Green from Ziltec again. And I've done this Neutron Cube. New, uh, a canister. Neutron canister. Not really sure what I'm going to do with it. Maybe I can catch or capture neutrons in the air or something. I don't know. Or to put money in, to hide money. That'd be pretty cool. But it prints in this orientation on the build plate. This took like, I don't know, 30 hours, 32 hours, something like that to print. And uh, let me see if I can do this with one hand here. Get that done screw. Uh, we're almost there. I'm filming part of this with my cell phone, so bear with me, please. We're almost there. Getting close. And look! Ta-da! It opens! Kind of looks like a thermos. And there's just a tiny little bit of stringy in there, but yeah, it came out good. Came out very nice. Love the quality. Love the color. Great filament. And you just screw it all the way back up, and then the lid don't open. See, it teetered right there. So you screw that ring up past it, then it won't open. So that's pretty cool. And these are a bunch of things I've been working on. And I used various slicers. I tried Cura. This was a pre-sliced file. And I jumped into Cura, and I done the Benchy. And then I think I went to Idea Maker, and then I tried Prusa Slicer. And I got on one of their Facebook groups, Randy Cubic. I'll list it here on the screen. And was looking for a profile, and... Uh, Found a profile somebody created. They, it was for PETG. I changed it to PLA, changed some settings on it, and uh, yeah. But as far as for the printer, it's an amazing little printer. It's a sub three hundred dollar printer. It's like two ninety nine. It's an amazing printer, and this might be the greatest printer of all for twenty twenty two. I mean, it's got an ABL on it. It's got a direct drive extruder, solid bed mounts, uh, flexible build sheet. Um, it's amazing. It's got, you know, you can tension your belt. It's got belt tensioners on it. Beautiful printer. Very well built. Let's kind of do a walk around. It's got a touch screen on it. And you're hearing a fan running right now. And uh, once you start doing a print and uh, you get all done, it sits there and it parks itself for a little bit. And then the fan on the hot end automatically shuts down. The switch is on the side, so it's not in the back. It's very easy to get to. It has a single Z. Not really sure about the single Z. I mean, it seems to work, but it seems to me with the weight of a direct drive, um, you know, that it would have dual Z screws. Dual lead screws. But it doesn't, and so, but so far so good. I've had no issues with it. Very cool printer. I think it's a great price, uh, what they're asking for it. And, uh, yeah, please like, subscribe, share this video out, everybody. Um, it's currently Memorial Day. When I'm finishing up this video, and I hope you liked the video, please like, subscribe, and share. Go check out Anticubic and their cool little Cobra. They also make a bigger version. It's like 300 by 300 by something. 
a much larger version, but it's a nice little printer. It's basically the size of an Ender 3. And, uh, but it's got, like I say, it's got an ABL. It's got a direct drive extruder. You can adjust your X and your Y. Amazing. Beautiful machine. I love it. So, happy 3D printing, everybody, and you have an awesome day. Later, guys.